I'm going to give a very quick presentation on the activities we've developed as champions and particularly around uh, the expert network. It's going to be short, um, just to kind of give a flavor. And then really, I think the meat of the, of the exercise will be Steve um, kind of taking you through the various tools we've developed um, that allow us to collaborate um, in, in a digital space. Um, this, in, of course, to a degree has been driven by, by, by the COVID and where we're at in, in, in that in circumstances. But I think far wider, we've really set up quite a, a nice and comprehensive digital collaboration space that we're keen to share with you guys. Um, and then after that, we'll move on to the single presentations from um, the projects. Is that correct, Kirsten? Cool. All right. I will share my screen. Where is, there she is. Okay, everybody see this? Yep. Cool, thank you. So the expert network was established in November last year. Um, here you can see the composition of the expert network. The purpose of the expert network, um, it has a number of different objectives. Um, the first is to generate a sense of community around the digital environment. Um, what do we mean with digital environment? So this is one of these terms that has come up um, and is, we've been building on for a while in the sense that we see a lot of modelers, uh, people around sensing, sensor development, people around um, how to use informatics, information systems, um, tools and developing tools. They tend to be very associated to their various NERC disciplines. So hydrologists talk to hydrologists, soil scientists talk to soil scientists, uh, climate change oceanographers. That's but the challenges they face are similar. Um, and so we feel that there's, there's this opportunity to learn from one another in that sense. But also as we move forward, it's very clear that the environment is a system um, and we have to approach it from, a, from an entire systems approach, so a multidisciplinary approach. And of course, the, the digital cuts across these disciplines very nicely as a theme. So there's really two objectives here. One is to start developing this concept of uh, what do we mean with digital? Uh, what are some of our challenges? Uh, what are some of the good practices? That's why Steve's on a, about identifying examples of good practice in, uh, in, in developing digital solutions. Um, and, but also in terms of just getting that communication across the different disciplines, because in essence, uh, modelers tend to face similar problems no matter what discipline, as do people that develop sensors and that integration from sensors to information systems, to models, to decision tools, is, that arc is quite similar uh, across all disciplines. So that's, those are really the two objectives or the number of objectives around the expert network. There, there are further objectives around impact and outreach and widening the, in the, the, the scope of activities and the, the impact of these activities across civil society, policy, government and industry. And as you can see there, we have quite a, a mix of industry, policy, early careers, academics, uh, senior academics, and we have a number of international experts too. Um, we'll be looking to renew the membership of the expert network sometime this uh, early in the next couple of months, and we're trying to develop um, how the approach is around that. So part of what I'm telling you, keep in mind, if you've got someone you think uh, is, is, uh, would be interested in this, please let us know. Okay, so like I said, um, the, the intent is to kind of cover that arc of sensor, de sensor technology, sensor development, earth observation to data systems. So kind of, you know, getting the information about the, getting the data about the environment, uh, organizing, collating, sorting, storing that data, turning that data into information through data science, through models. Um, and then the citizen science decision support thing to make that data, data useful for end users. Um, because information per se is not right, you have to also start thinking about how an end user, a policymaker or industry might actually benefit from that information. So that kind of gives you the, this, the sense of arc that we're covering um, and the, the little people underneath it is, is where at the moment we have um, most of our members, um, of course, one member can be active in more things. Likewise, it's inter truly interdisciplinary. So the box on the bottom right gives you a flavor of the various disciplines that they come from. And as you see, we have ag, ecology, hydrology. But we also have law, business. We have quite a, a, a spread of people active in this network. And we have across industry, uh, research centers, government, 
NGOs, academics. So we have a good flavor of, of, of people involved in this expert network, which makes the debates and discussions we have quite lively. We meet um, every six months, um, and as I have a large uh, biannual meeting where we bring everybody together and have big discussions about what we what various topics around the expert network. And then we have very specific activities on which I'll go, which I, on which I'm going to touch upon later. And there's three there's four strands of activities. Um, one we recently completed, um, and, I, and I'm going to go into a bit more detail there because it gives you a flavor of the kind of outputs and activities that we do. And then um, I will broaden out and, and briefly discuss the other envisioned activities we have on the expert network. So one of the key successes, early successes we did was in the uh, spring, we ran a set of, we ran an ideathon, um, basically thinking about how we could respond to COVID challenges um, and that ideathon, which ran across the expert network but involved other people wider than that, came up with a set of hackathon activities and themes um, again, focused around uh, environmental solutions to the COVID challenge. Um, one is air quality, uh, one was recovery, one was ecosystem services, and one was visualizing risk. I'm going to briefly go through these very, very quickly. You're just going to get a quick flavor of what the hackathons did. Um, and then I'm going to move on to some of the other activities. Uh, S Steve and I can will happily answer any questions if you've got more specifics. So uh, of the four digital student hackathon events, we had about 50 registrations. We had 19 full entries in GitHub, which Steve will show. Um, and it was, it was quite successful, quite a wide success of, of, of interest around that. Now, for me, being an academic, the interest was basically in what they actually did as well as, 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 as this wide uh, scope of impact. The first one, uh, looking at air quality, as you can see, was uh, was won by the Bristol Air Squad, and they really looked at developing a Bayesian um, inference system around uh, relating air quality to COVID-related instances. The second one was won um, by the and I can't even remember um, by the Cardiff University Maths Department, and they looked at how to organize a um, a carriage, um, um, a train carriage to minimize COVID risk. So how you would organize shielding and how you would organize seating to minimize the risk of cross infection from COVID if you were to take a train. Um, the very interesting uh, rationale around this was as we, as they quickly picked up that because of COVID related um, risks, people would be more likely to step back into the car than they would using public transport, transport and that there is a real risk um, in terms of decarbonizing or meeting our decarbonization targets that COVID will, will lead to societal behaviors that are very carbon intense. And they lo were looking through this app-based system to de-risk um, public transport. The third uh, was Fresh to Furious. Um, they were um, basically a mixture of various, ac uh, various academics and engineers. And they basically looked at um, where COVID is and how it relates to green space. And they looked at the value of green space and how that kind of relate to code infection and the visualization was really, really nice. The fourth kind of looked at visualizing risk um, and generated an app. Um, so this was Team Visigoth, generated an app where basically you could determine um, locally what, what your risk was of COVID. And this, of course, precursed the, the current COVID app, um, but it, would, it had a very nice visualization space. So this gives you a flavor of the kind of um, activities and outputs that you can get from what we call agile response to uh, challenges. It, it allowed us and within the program to present to uh, the UK government a, a different and, and, and exciting way of working, um, whereby in essence, we could respond very, very agilely with a, very, with a strong element of agile, agility, and quick response to challenges. Um, as well as the more fundamental work, which is represented by the, the funded programs that you guys have. So what else are we going to do um, in the uh, CDE network? Well, things like uh, there'll be a Q&A kind of space where uh, we can, we've got very, very good experts on this network, but they're very busy. So we have to be very specific and we can put specific challenges to these experts. 
um, either around uh, industry or uh, around policy, then they're quite, they're quite eager to help. Um, a number of our experts are developing a webinar series. Um, at the moment, the webinar series uh, is around uncertainty. It might, it might be broadened at the moment uh, beyond that, but these webinar series would kind of get key speakers to talk about key issues in, the, in constructing a digital environment. We have a set of activities, uh, quite a deep activity led by our experts around horizon scanning. So you know, one of the challenges we had was we know what the challenges are now around um, sensors, sensors to information systems, et cetera. But what are the one of the key, what are the, the type of challenges that are on the horizon? So the technology in this space it, uh, changes quickly, develops very, very quickly. And so in essence, in order to, to, to truly uh, have impact, it, we need to understand not only the challenges and solutions that we can develop today, but also start understanding what's going to come down the road at us. Um, Steve will touch upon blogging and the various blog activities we have. Um, and I need to move my little... Uh, apologies, I'm going to move this thing. I had the uh, little Zoom thing with all the faces on in the way of the workshops. So um, we also wanna develop um, a set of workshops, Kunk Works we call them, um, whereby basically we, we delve into a particular topic. Um, and uh, a good example of that, for instance, is what happens if you have a wide range of sensor systems of varying quality, uh, variance provenance, and particularly some of them are um, older than others. So you have aging technology mixed with novel technology, perhaps mixed with, uh, ex with uh, expert um, or citizen science. How do you incorporate all of that to help um, uh, an agency make decision making such as flood defense? Um, and how do, you, how do you deal with the uncertainty around that? Um, there are some other topics that we might pick up on, but these would be then a set of two, uh, a set of a week long deep dive kind of activities whereby we would just focus on that particular topic and really try to, to, to develop a solution around that. Um, so this is a different level of activity than, for instance, the hackathons, which tend to be solution focused, very agile, but, but have a different level of, of sophistication. Um, we, as, as Kirsten mentioned, we're reaching out to uh, lots of other programs, you, you know, we're bringing together the program activities that we have in our program. Um, we want to work with the Digital Solutions Program, which is our sister program. Um, and in essence, there's some other thoughts we have around KTNs. And then of course, our stakeholders, how we, how we, um, how we link with stakeholders, um, how we link with the wider academia, how do we reach out to the wider communities and co-develop. So these are some of the challenges we put ourselves or put towards ourselves within the expert network. And some, and as you can see, we've identified in green underneath some of the possible uh, activities that we as an expert network could put forward to deal with some of the challenges we have identified. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about the expert network. I'm now going to hand over to Steve, who's actually going to show you the far more exciting bits, which are the nuts and bolts, the, the actual elements in this that make all these things actually work and happen. Right. Um, okay. So hopefully you can all all hear me. And I'm just conscious that we are running a little bit behind time. So I, I think we may possibly not have the breakout room, but we'll have a, a sort of general discussion in a minute. But let, let me just in a couple of moments explain some of the technologies. Now, that you, as you know, this is one of two meetings and um, I'm not actually able to join the one next week. So in a sense, I think this is being recorded and my uh, my presentation will uh, will be shown next week as well, so bear that in mind. So, all right, very good. I'd like to show the um, technologies that we're using. And if I just share my screen, uh, first of all, I'll just quickly bring up the the main website, and you'll you'll see. Hopefully, you're all quite familiar with this, the website. It explains all about the 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 ambition and uh, program itself. Um, it explains the objectives as Ron's just been through of the um, program. 
and the, the role that we have and introduces the expert network that Ron, Ron just spoke about with links to um, short bio, bio um, descriptions of each of those uh, colleagues. Uh, it lists all of the projects that we have, including obviously your, your own projects uh, listed there. And um, what we'd like to talk about is ways that we can have a page for each of these projects that's very much more something that you yourselves would provide us with information to have in this in this sort of central place. Uh, Ron spoke about the uh, various activities of the expert networks, one of which is doing a webinar series. And um, it won't surprise you to know that we'll be speaking with um, you in due course to see if you might be prepared to give a one of the short half hour webinars in, in, in the months to come. So that, that will be good. Um, uh, another of our experts, uh, Jenny, is present in Cream Tea uh, project. And in fact, um, we have an example here of something that's taking shape here. One of the data discovery trails, one of the things we learned in the, uh, the COVID hackathons was the need to have um, data discovery across the NERC um, data centers. And this is one way of trying to, trying to capture that, that trail of data. We also have uh, a fairly active blog. And again, it won't surprise you to know that we may be looking to see if you may wish to contribute a, a short 500 words plus picture blog every now and again, or, or your team, colleagues, um, into this central repository of blogs and, and so on. So that's, that's enough on the, the website. Um, I will draw your attention quickly to the, the, the hackathon pages that Ron mentioned, if only just to say that we have also one of the other set up is a, a, a GitHub for the, um, for, the, for the program itself. And then here we are, we are able to gather together examples of uh, Python scripts, R scripts, the use of Binder, if you're not familiar with Binder as a way of launching those apps really fantastic uh, resource actually for anyone starting out in environmental data science to come and have a look at some of these excellent solutions um, here. And um, we've just shown a few pictures of the um, example outputs from, from that. So for example, a team Visigoth that Ron just put there on the screen. So you can have a look on our, our GitHub, which is linked from the, from the website. We, this, this is an example of one of the applications that looks at safe distancing and um, shielding on in public transport as an example of one of the, one of the things that, uh, that, that was undertaken in that process. We also, of course, have um, our, um, the, the usual things like t tweeting and so on. And I think Kirsten in her note just identified, for those of you who are into tweet, um, the sort of handles that we can use like SPF, DigiEng, just to make sure everything links up together in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, what, I, what I would like to suggest then is on the, on the website, there are um, a few points just to very quickly make. One is we would like to record the um, presentations that you're just about to make and maybe capture those as a, as a, as a quick pitch for each of the projects. We would like to invite each of the um, projects to have a, a short page of information about the project, which we will have in this a sort of central location. In other words, please use this website as, a, as a, a means to disseminate or one of the ways to disseminate your work. We may come back and see if um, PIs or wider teams would like to have a slightly longer um, presentation, perhaps in the form of a, a conversation recorded um, with, with a Q&A type um, activity about the, the work that you're doing. Um, and th in the other, if I may just completely um, finish by showing Slack, which is just here, we have um, a Slack channel, which we have set up for the expert network. And if you're familiar with Slack, it's one of these social me media type um, chatting, sharing, file sharing things. It's a, it's a super uh, um, resource for everyone. And what we propose doing is setting up a Slack for the, um, for, for the, the funded projects now. And with the expert networks, we meet bi-weekly for a one hour where we just, everyone hammers away at this and there's lots of sharing. And that's 
been a tremendous boost for the uh, expert network, and we think we can probably do something similar to that with the with with the funded projects. So I'll I'll stop there. But that's that's just a quick overview of the the various tools and, and um, techniques that we have, and um, it's listed on the website as well. Uh,